Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters listening to me, I want to welcome you in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank him for his leading, his mercies upon us, especially during these times that we live in. I want to welcome you to our study once again and uh, a warm welcome to all of you that are listening to us from the four corners of this world over here, basing at Ugema University. Good day to you. Good evening to you, wherever you are in your time zones. And may God bless you as we get into our study today. I, my name is Moses Maka here at Ugema University and uh, I want to draw your attention for today and the days to come to one of the most profound messages that God has ever revealed to us as human beings. And that is from the book of Psalms. And for our study in the series that we are going to stand today, to start today, I will be taking you into what are called the pilgrim Psalms. I'll explain these pilgrim Psalms as we go by. But before we go into our study today, I want to pray with you as I also invite uh, my sister to come and lead us into a special song. Let us bow in prayer together. Heavenly Father, a moment such as this is a precious one, for it is now that we've been invited before your throne of grace as we, feet, we sit at your feet that through your spirit, your word will be able to reach us. I pray for all our listeners that, Lord, you will reach over to them, that as I purpose to communicate your word even today, that your spirit will minister, transforms these words to be applicable into their lives to your glory, as you also prepare us in this world for your soon coming. To you be glory, Father, now, and forevermore we thank and praise you in Jesus name. Yeah. Now I will invite my sister Aida Kanunto to come and lead us in a special song. Thank you. Happy Sabbath to you all and uh, I would love to sing a song it is from one of the hymnals, and I hope it brings hope to all of us even in these times. So I pray that you'll be blessed as you listen to it. So tell the voice of an angel within With a gentle persuasion, whispers a comforting word. Wait till the darkness sees
then when the night is up Watch for the breaking of day. We spire Thank you, Sister Aida. Brothers and sisters listening to me at this moment, I want to draw your attention at such a beautiful song to our text that we shall consider for today. As I've already mentioned, for this hour and the time to come, we shall draw and focus our attention to the book of Psalms. And I will be considering a section of Psalms which are called the Pilgrim Psalms. But before we get there, allow me to take you into two texts that I want to keep bringing in your mind. And the first one is Psalm 84 verse 5. In the New King James Version it says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. It says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. And when we go back into the book of First Chronicles, chapter 25, 29, verse 15, it says, For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as we are all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. From within these two texts, we gather that we, you and me, are pilgrims, aliens, and wanderers in this world. For us, you know, we are here today, and tomorrow we are no more. What is so interesting is that we do not know our exit, and we don't know our next stop, and sometimes even in the journey that we move, we may not know even our destination. We start this journey. And we start this journey every other day. And we are on this journey every now and then. So for this moment, I want to take you into the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms is one that is the most profound books in the entire Bible. I've chosen this book of Psalms for meditation because unlike other books of the Bible, the Psalms happens to be not only the longest and most voluminous books in the entire Bible, but it, we're told that it's also the book that uh, spans all history and time 
more than any other book. Historians and Bible students have looked in the book of Psalms and have concluded that this is a book that was written longer than any other book that from the first Psalm to the last Psalm composed, we have a span of over 1,000 years. Just imagine with me that some Psalms were written during the time of Moses. We have Psalms written during the, ascribed to the sons of Korah. Psalms also are found that are written during the monarch that are ascribed to David and Solomon. But we also have Psalms that are written in the exile, like by the rivers of Babylon. And then we have post-exilic Psalms that were written like Psalm 126 that tells us uh, that when we return from captivity, we were like them that dreamt. And so from within that span of Moses' period, over to the monarch times, over to the exile times, and back into Jerusalem after the exile, we stretch a range of over a thousand years. It so happens that it so happens that it is it's this book of Psalms that has seen the generation of people grow from faith to faith, from challenge to challenge. You come to the book of Psalms and there you face to face with a community of believers that have their faith in God, but a people that have been challenged through different different circumstances and life situations. When you come to the book of Psalms, you will be able to appreciate and understand that you come to a sincere worshiper who calls a spade a spade. When a psalmist is happy, they will tell you, I am happy. And they will tell you, praise be to the Lord. Hallelujah. When a psalmist is not happy, even with the Lord in the situation, they will not be hypocrites and they have their faith under the guise of, of, of the Lord will be able to see them. A psalmist will be able to come loud and clear and tell you that I am disappointed. The times when a psalmist is so open to the point, the point of being even blatant, that he can even pose questions to God and ask, God, why God? How long, Lord? When will this end, Lord? Uh, there's a particular psalm that asks God, will you wait for me to die and then you will come to my rest? Are those that worship you and go to the grave be able to praise your name and tell the wonders of your name? So a psalmist is one who will come and tell it as it is. We, we happen to have many types of psalms according to Bible students. There are psalms that are how to praise the Lord. Thanksgiving Psalms. But there are also Psalms that are out to inquire from the Lord, to cry to the Lord. Those are called loving Psalms. There are also Psalms that are out there to bring their sins and challenges over to God, and those are called penitential Psalms. And there are also certain Psalms that are out to bring out certain elements that are not so pleasant. Psalms that are out to deal with the enemies, the enemies of the Psalms. And those are called cursing Psalms. In a technical language, they are called imprecatory Psalms. They are out to declare certain curses upon the enemies of the Psalms. But for our consideration, I chose that we do a study of what are called the Pilgrim Psalms. Pilgrim Psalms are a special category of Psalms. You know, whenever you go to the book of Psalms, especially if you have a good translation, you should be able to look at what is called the proscription, and that is uh, uh, a title on each of the Psalms. First of all, the Psalms is divided into five sections, five books. But even when you come back, what you'll be able to see that each of the Psalms has a particular title, a description that tells us how the, that particular psalm was used in worship and in the day-to-day -day life. 
you miss a lot if you don't go and study some of those uh, headings that tend to describe and give us a glimpse of what certain sounds were for and in the particular times they were used in circumstances. It so happens that we have a category, a special category of sounds, and those sounds fall in the category of what I have entitled the Peregrine Psalms. Peregrine Psalms range from Psalm 120 to 134. There are 15 Psalms in number. And this happens to be some of the most quoted and referred Psalms in the entire Bible. For these are called pilgrim psalms. But why are they called pilgrim psalms? They are called pilgrim psalms because they were those psalms that were used in particular swift circumstances when the children of Israel are said to have come from the diaspora, from their cities, from the dispersion and from wherever they had gone to, to reside back to Jerusalem to celebrate their annual festivals of the Passover festival of the day of Pentecost and also the festival of shelters. These three particular festivals required that every Israelite would come over back to Jerusalem that it was only there where the children would be able to meet God and meet with one another in fellowship and in thanksgiving to the Lord for the many things that he has done for them throughout the period past. And during these three major festivals, they came back to Jerusalem to celebrate and thank God for the good times as they also look forward to the times ahead. This particular Psalms from 120 to 34, depending on what translation you have, some translations have pilgrim Psalms, yes, but there are other Psalms that have ascent Psalms. Other translations have Psalms of degrees. And depending on what translation you have, I have chosen the translation of the pilgrim Psalms because these were Psalms Psalms by the pilgrims, sung by the wanderers, sung by the travelers as they moved from their homes back to Jerusalem. And as our text mentioned, you and I are pilgrims and wanderers. For this hour, for this moment, I want to give you a glimpse of what these sons are all about. I've told you that this happens, this section of pilgrim psalms happen to be one of the most widely quoted psalms. You go over to Psalm 120, and uh, it will be able to give you also something profound and to tell you something which uh, I want to share with you at this moment. Psalm 120. Uh, some 120 to 121. But allow me to go to 21, which will be one of the Psalms that I'm going to dwell upon for the few moments that I have with you. It's in my King, New King James Bible, it says, A Song of Ascents. A Song of Ascents. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the ears. From whence comes my heart? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps his brother shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shed at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by the night. The Lord shall preserve you. From all evil, he shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Psalm 121. 
is believed that this particular son is the son that was meditated upon, the son that was invoked upon, a son that was recited when this pilgrim was starting his or her journey from their homes to Jerusalem. I want to paint a picture for you that during that time there were no there were no trains, there were no buses, there were no vehicles as we have them today. There were no there were no motorways and caravan, and there was no motorways and highways. But during that time, they were treading through caravan routes, which were so dangerous that not many could know even whether they could be able to reach. And so during this rough tearing of the caravan routes, this pilgrim will start their, their journey. And it's believed that when this son was being sung, it so happened that it was a son at a time when the pilgrim had his sandals on, had his garment on. When the pilgrim was ready with his staff in the hand, when the pilgrim was ready with, the, with, with his luggage, with his water and the food to, 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 to keep him on the journey. The pilgrim was ready and that is when he had come, he had, he had prepared himself ready for the journey. And in the middle of the family, with his sandals and staff and garment and staff, and uh, his luggage ready, he could come in the middle for dedication. And this was the dedication psalm for the pilgrim. He could come, and the first two verses were sung by the pilgrim himself. Imagine a circle of family members, and the pilgrim is in the middle. They are holding their hands, ready for dedication, for the last prayer. And verses 1 and 2 are those for the pilgrim himself when he says, I lift my hands to the hills, from where does my help come from? And then he remembers and he affirms that my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Verses 3 to 8 were those sung by, recited by the family members. And they would come and tell him in affirmation that do not worry, pilgrim. He will not allow your food to be moved. They will assure him that he who keeps you on your journey to Jerusalem will not slumber. Take heart because he who keeps Israel never slumbers. No sleeps, for he is awake 24 7. They are found and encourage him that the Lord on this journey is your keeper. The Lord will be your shed in the blaring sun. And to say, The sun shall not strike you by day, and even at night, he shall be with you. Verse 7 says, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil that you shall encounter on your journey. He shall preserve your soul. He shall keep you alive. And lastly, they are found and said, the Lord shall preserve your going to Jerusalem and your coming back from Jerusalem, back home even forever. And that was the end of the prayer of dedication. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. I've chosen this son that you and me should be reminded that we are here today and tomorrow no more. For even our forefathers that were here, many of them have left us. And if I may paraphrase it, we, like our forefathers, we also take our journey someday. But as you still are here, for what we challenge you to do what you have to do in time, and with focus knowing that today you're here and tomorrow you may not be. It is my challenge to you that you will know what to do for now that needs to be done. Plant a seed today. 
plant a tree today, make a difference today. For what you can do today is only that which you can tomorrow may not be. And as long as we are still counting today, it is my challenge to all of you that lets you know that as our forefathers were, we also will be. And that because we are pilgrims and wanderers in this world. But on a pessimistic, on a, on a, an optimistic note, I want to tell you that as the children of Israel were dedicated going to Jerusalem, you and I also know that we have another Jerusalem we are going to. Another Canaan we are looking for, and that's the heavenly realms. I want to tell you that every day that comes, we are moving. Every day that we wake up, we are moving towards that journey. We are making that journey. You wake up that journey every day. You make a step forward towards that journey. And one day, you and me shall make it to the heaven of Jerusalem, where we shall be with our brothers and sisters and with the Lord in sweet fellowship forevermore. It is my challenge in conclusion that you should do what you have to do, knowing that we have but a little time. Our time ahead to the finishing of this journey is shorter than that which we have covered so far. It is my challenge to you that as you do what you do today, may you take it upon yourself to know that we are here today and tomorrow the more, that we are pilgrims in this world, but we have a journey to make. A journey not to the grave for those of us who believe, but a journey to the heaven of Canaan, to the heaven of Jerusalem, where we wait at Savior. I want you to pray with me as we get into our message. We pray for as we close our message for an hour. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. Thank you that you speak to us through your hard words. And even now, as you've reminded us from these pilgrim psalms that we are wanderers. And we are pilgrims in this world. Help us to know the timing of our journey that every day that we wake up, we know that we are making a step forward towards the completion of this journey. We don't know how long it will take, but the signs around us show and testify that we are soon home. Help us that we will not stumble on the way, that we will not fight on the way, that we will not get lost on from the way, but we'll keep Focused on you on this journey as we wait for your coming. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you and the Lord bless you.